spiritual enlightenment is death. When spiritual enlightenment happens to you, you will die. Hello, this is Shores Infinity with your host Chris speaking. And this is a video about death. What is meant with death in spirituality? There's a metaphorical death, the death of the ego, and there's a physical death, the death of the body. Both can happen on the spiritual path to enlightenment. One of them is probably what you're after, and the other one is probably not what you're after. Although there are some people who long to die physically, for usually for traumatic reasons, and this is exactly the point. You need to work on your trauma. There's nothing more important on the spiritual path than working on your trauma, on your traumata. However many they are and whatever they are. Because they will come up sooner or later. And the sooner you deal with them on the path, the easier. If they come up later, at the very later stages, higher stages of enlightenment, so to say, at the finish line, they can destroy you. Really, then it means physical death in many cases. I know several people to whom this has happened, and C.G. Jung, Jung has written about it, and Jed McKenna has written about it, and others. It, it can cause a heart attack or a stroke or some other thing. The second most important thing is to prepare your subtle body. Maybe also to some degree your physical body, but mostly your subtle, your vital, your energy body for the energy influx that will come in. It's so much energy, if you have blockages there, it's horrible. It can be unbearable pain. So it's good to work on the free flow of your nadis and your chakras and so on. Most people, what most people think spiritual enlightenment is, is very much influenced either by religion or, or uh, by some bullshit they read or heard that is actually not true, or by entheogenic, hallucinogenic experiences like DMT and stuff. This is all nothing compared to what real enlightenment is, enlightenment as we define it here on the channel 700 plus, location 12 plus, and 30 as well dynamics. Everything else you heard about is child's play. And it's not always fun. It can be fun because there can be love and universal collectedness, unity and so on. Just as there is at lower stages already. But it's not fun if you're not healthy. If your physical and your energetical systems are not healthy, are not clean, clear. So this is a very dangerous endeavor. Religious awakening not. If you're after religious awakening, if you just want to experience what famous religious figures, idols, gurus, prophets and so on experience, it's fine, go this way. It doesn't go towards truth, but it goes towards joy and bliss and love. It's wonderful. If you're after truth, of course you have to also solve your trauma. That's part of the truth. You have to let go of your story and let go of your traumata. All the stuff you've identified with before, you need to let go. Let go, let go, let go, let go. If not, it's like an explosion or implosion. I've been saying that for four years now and uh, people usually don't believe me until it happens to them. The same goes for one of my favorite topics, Kundalini awakening. That's the same. The reason why this is uh, partly uncomfortable to people, psychologically and physically, is because they were not ready for it. The physical and the subtle body was not ready for it. That's why you have electrical shocks and whatnot. Or depression afterwards or some such. You know? 
you need to clean out the muck first before, before the clear light can come in without wreaking havoc. It will come in at some point if you're ready or not and you better be ready. So I recommend to you to suffer a little bit now, suffer a little bit through trauma therapy with a real trauma therapist, not at home with a book. It doesn't work. I know people think it works, but it's bullshit. You cannot trauma therapy yourself. You need to go to a trauma therapist. And suffer a little bit now, resolve your childhood issues, and then the way is clear for enlightenment. If the suffering comes later, when enlightenment hits you, full enlightenment hits you, and your nadis and your chakras and your psyche and your body is not clear, anything can happen, up to a heart attack or a stroke. Many people have died already. This is one of the reasons why so many, why there are so few people talking about enlightenment. Really, people talking about real enlightenment to whom it has happened. There are a lot of people who just talk bullshit about something that they've read or heard, and then they talk about it because that's what we do in our society. We talk about stuff that we have no idea about, as if we were experts. Of those we have enough, but people who to whom enlightenment has really happened, most of them just shut up and don't talk about it and live as a recluse somewhere or pretend to the outside world it hasn't happened to them because they can't understand and don't want to know anyway. I mean, who goes around? There are no politicians, for example, who go around asking uh, for wise people and enlightened people to uh, advise them consult them. No, it doesn't happen. So better shut up. The, this is the largest group. The second largest group is people who just didn't survive it. They died. They physically died when enlightenment happened to them. So brief fun and off to the next adventure. And the third group are the very, very few people who talk honestly about it and most people don't want to hear it, like for example U.G. Krishnamurti and Jed McKenna, the, the most, two of the most unpopular gurus, because they're talking the truth. It's not bullshitty, it's not religious. I don't really care if most people who listen to this video believe this or not. Most will not. I also will turn up the comments, enough comments. But for those few for whom this is helpful, it will be helpful. If it's only helpful for one or two people, it's fine, that's good enough. The famous poet Rainer Maria Rilke wrote, Every angel is terrible. And this is what he meant with it, he was also enlightened. Every angel is terrible. Every experience and passing through gates of real full enlightenment and there again there even several stages up there is both beautiful and terrible it's like an angel and also like a horror show there are thresholds there where you have to jump you have to jump into the unknown and Maybe you die physically and maybe not. What will definitely not come back is your ego. There is no I coming back from these experiences. So anyway, you can give up <laughs> right now if you're just after self-aggrandizement or after someone patting on your back or oh, so great, some, um, what's it called, appreciation. Huh? Someone will finally come up to you and say, wow, well done, you have, well, you have done so well. You're so wonderful now. If, if that's the real reason why you're after enlightenment, forget about it. It's just another story. It won't work and might even backfire. 
even if enlightenment will happen to you, then this part of you now that wants it will be gone. It's gone. So either your ego will die or your body will die. One of the two. But you will, as you are now, will never be enlightened. It's impossible. It's impossible. Enlightenment will happen to some beings, but then uh, the I part, the me part of that individual will be gone. Then you will be part of a larger unity. Then some tricky minds would say, yeah, it's, this is what I want. I want to go back to the fold. I want to be the raindrop that goes back into the ocean. Why? Yeah, if you want to go, if you want to die for trauma reasons, yeah, if, because you have psychological, emotional pain, this will not work. You have to deal with this pain first. You cannot flee from the pain. You have to go through the pain anyway. It's better to do it now than later. Because later it will be even more intense. You have to face your demons. You have to. Sooner or later. There is no way around it. Enlightenment is not an escape from facing your demons. From facing your childhood trauma. So, or trauma. There is no escaping here. You have to deal with it sooner or later and I recommend sooner. Thank you for watching, liking and subscribing and joining me on Patreon. There are regular posts on Patreon. And thanks for all those who have already joined me on Patreon and are supporting this channel. Thank you very much.